morning. Welcome to Resurrection Lutheran Cooperative Ministries Sunday service on this 12th Sunday after Pentecost. I'm so glad you're able to join us. And here are the announcements for this week. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, then we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of your sin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we Amen. 
be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you resist those who are proud and give grace to those who are humble. Give us the humility of your Son, that we may embody the generosity of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first lesson is from the 25th chapter of Proverbs. Do not put yourself forward in the king's presence or stand in the place of the great, for it is better to be told, come up here, than to be put lower in the presence of a noble. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Today's psalm is Psalm 112. Hallelujah. Happy are they who fear the Lord and have great delight in his commandments. Their descendants will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches will be in their house, and their righteousness will last forever. Light shines in the darkness for the upright. The righteous are merciful and full of compassion. It is good for them to be generous in lending and to manage their affairs with justice. For they will never be shaken, and the righteous will be kept in everlasting remembrance. They will not be afraid of any evil rumors. Their heart is right. They put their trust in the Lord. Their heart is established and will not shrink until they see their desire upon their enemies. They have given freely to the poor, and their righteousness stands fast forever. They will hold up their head with honor. The wicked will see it and be angry. They will gnash their teeth and hide away. The desires of the wicked will perish. The second lesson is from the 13th chapter of Hebrews. Let brotherly love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. Remember those who are in prison and though in prison with them, and those who are mistreated since you are also in the body. Let marriage be held in honor among all, and let the marriage bed be undefiled, for God will judge the sexually immoral and adulterous. Keep your life free from love of money, and be content with what you have, for he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we can confidently say, The Lord is my helper, I will not fear. What can man do to me? Remember your leaders, those who spoke to you, the word of God. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Through him, then let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of lips that acknowledge his name. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. according to St. Luke, the 14th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. One Sabbath, when, he, when Jesus went to dine at the house of a ruler of the Pharisees, they were watching him carefully. Now he told a parable to those who were invited when he noticed how they chose the places of honor, saying to them, when you are invited by someone to a wedding feast, do not sit down in a place of honor, lest someone more distinguished than you be invited by him. And he who invited you both will come and say to you, give your place to this person. And then you will begin with shame to take the lowest place. But when you are invited, go and sit in the lowest place. So that when your host comes, he may say to you, friend, move up higher. Then you'll be honored in the presence of all who sit at table with you. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled. And he who humbles himself will be exalted. And he said also to the man who had invited him, when you give a dinner or a banquet, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbors, lest they also invite you in return and you be repaid. But when you give a feast, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you, for you will be, you will be repaid at the resurrection of the just. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Good morning, boys and girls. Uh, today, I, I, you know, I just want to see how is the first week of school for you guys? 
because I think by now almost all school districts have kind of started up. And I know Armstrong uh, started on Wednesday with the first, you had the first three days beginning on Wednesday. How was it? Well, you know, one of my favorite times uh, looking at the start of school, I loved going school supply shopping. I just love going and finding all the notebooks, all the pencils, all the, you know, all of those things. And I just, it, it just, it made me feel like everything was fresh, everything was new, it, you, it had endless possibilities. Now, I didn't love starting school, I just loved getting all the supplies. And so whenever I would get the supplies, especially when I was younger, my mom would uh, take out a Sharpie and would start writing my name on everything. And then when I was older, I would be the one that would write my name on everything. Now, why do you think I wrote my name on everything? Well, I wrote my name on it to make sure that everyone knew this folder belonged to Matthew. This pencil belonged to Matthew. This uh, calculator belonged to Matthew. All of these things that we find so important, we put our name on. We, we uh, claim it as our own. Well, did you know that you too have been claimed? Yeah, you have been claimed. In your baptism, God claimed you as a child of God. And so just like how we put our names on all the things that are meaningful to us, God has placed his name on each and every one of us. And so it's much like how if we were to walk around with a name tag that said, hello, I'm a child of God. And that's the most important thing to remember is that in this world, we are a child of God. And God is the one who gives us the meaning of life. He's the one who tells us that we're valuable, that we are worth more than anything that we could ever imagine. That you matter because God says, I love you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise for your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who came into the world to love us. Lord, thank you for claiming us as, a as your child in the waters of baptism. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. This morning we hear Jesus on the Sabbath day go to dine at the house of a ruler of the Pharisees. Now Jesus noticed that all the guests were almost fighting over sitting in the places of honor. They wanted to sit as close to the ruler of the Pharisees as possible. In this parable, Jesus tells them to not take the seat of honor where the host may ask you to sit lower, but instead to go and sit in the lowest place. And if you're at the lowest place, the host may then invite you to move higher. And as Jesus ends, the, ends it, he says, For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. And you know, we as Lutherans are very good at following this parable, because we always strive to sit as far away as possible in the congregation. And you know, I have to apologize that I have not been diligent in this and that I have not formally invited you all to come and take the seats of honor in the front row. And so if you're in the very back, I invite you as children of God, come on up and take the seats of honor up here in the front row. Well, there's no takers, I see. So it was worth a try at least. But know that you've been invited to the places of honor. But in this parable, uh, we can read it a couple different ways. We can read it one way literally, and we can have some very good advice on how to view life uh, from Jesus. You know, throughout the parable, we hear right off the bat Jesus telling us to humble ourselves so that later we may be honored. This is something that we all probably need to hear. We need to hear how we need to be more humble in our lives. Since it's our sinful nature to try and lift ourselves up time and time again. In life, we're called to look to Christ. We hear in the background St. Paul say, Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, 
but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men and being found in human form. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. You know, we hear uh, St. Paul say that Christ humbled himself by taking on our form in order that he might serve us. He came into this world to show us the way, the truth, and the life. He came into this world in order to defeat sin and death and the devil so that we who have done absolutely nothing can earn eternal life. Humility as a Lutheran is something that comes easy to us only when we put everything in perspective. For our whole belief is that we have not done anything in the past or the present, nor will we do anything in the future that will ever earn us salvation. As Martin Luther once said, to know Christ and to believe in him is not an achievement of man, but the gift of God. Our knowledge, our faith, our salvation is not built on anything that we do, but instead everything that Christ has done for us. For Christ is the one who humbled himself on the cross, and he is the one who was, is, and will always be the one who is exalted. It is Christ's love for us that we are able to have salvation. And it's only through him that we are able to be saved by grace through faith. When it comes to salvation, God gets all the verbs. He's the one that's doing all the action. And this is all that we can read for just what I said right there out of looking at this parable just literally. It's a very important message that God's the one who does everything. He's the one that gets the verbs. But this parable is deeper than just this literal view. This deeper meaning of this parable is something that I feel all congregations, all members of the church and everyone need to hear. And I think it's best described uh, by Chad Bird in an article that he wrote in November of 2021, posted on 1517.com. And it's an article titled, How a Small Country Congregation Became a Mega Church Overnight. And I know you all are wondering what the secret is, as I would consider us small country congregations. Um, so let me read you this article. Uh, Chad Bird starts out by saying, this is the story of how a small country church astounded the experts on church growth by becoming a mega church overnight without even trying. The gravel parking lot around St. John's began to fill early that morning. The shadow from the steeple cast the image of a cross on the western side of the church. Families from miles around climbed out of Fords and Chevrolets to make their way into the sanctuary. The pastor stood by the front door to greet folks, and he asked about Aunt Susan's broken hip, the Reynolds' new horse, and how, foot, how the football game turned out in Sunray the other night. The man of God who shepherded this flock wasn't much to look at. He had a bit of a gut, and he laughed too loud, especially at his corny jokes. But they loved the man. He had baptized their children, buried their grandparents, and even preached a decent sermon on occasion. By the time worship was ready to begin, it still hadn't happened. That shocking influx of worshipers I spoke of. In fact, things looked as ordinary as ordinary could be. The Kirkpatricks with their five children squeezed into the next to last pew. The spinster organist, Miss Schultz, played softly and hit, well, almost every note. Hymnals were open to the page where the service would soon begin. And at 10.30 sharp, Pastor Baker walked up the front and spoke the same words he did at the start of every Sunday service. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And the congregation responded with a hearty, Amen. Then, without any warning, it happened. The floodgates opened. Worshippers streamed in before the congregation had finished saying amen. This rural Texas mini church was transformed into the mega of mega churches. 
Here's how it all went down. Through the stained glass windows and the steeply pitched roof, seraphim swooped down from heavenly perches. Each sported six wings. With two, they covered their faces, and with two, they covered their feet, and with two, they flew. And around the sanctuary, they chanted one to another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The foundations of St. John's quaked at the sound of their voices. The whole church swam with the smoke of incense. But that was only the beginning. Cherubim winged their way down from the heavenly city. Not the cute, chubby, precious moments, angels, but manly warriors who stationed themselves like sentinels around the sanctuary. They belted out the words to the hymns, added their amens to the divine words read and preached that day. But the angels were not alone. With them came saints innumerable, men and women who had fought the good fight, finished the race and gone on to glory. But here they were, back at St. John's on this Lord's day. They added their voices to the earthly choir of farmers and ranchers and coaches and teachers who still trod the pathway toward the heavenly Jerusalem. The pews were packed, standing room only in the aisles. Some perched on the rafters and peered down with serene gazes upon the altar. There, wonders of wonders, was a throne. And on that throne stood a lamb, slain yet alive, sacrificed yet but resurrected. Every face of every worshiper, angelic and human, earthly and heavenly, was fixated upon his face. And there they looked upon the countenance of the merciful Almighty. With angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, the people of St. John's lauded and glorified the name of the Lamb, their Lord Jesus, that day. Sacred songs shook the buildings as the choirs wed their voices. The Lord's Supper was a reunion meal. The folks on earth and the saints in heaven dined on the feast of feasts and the drink that slakes the deepest thirst. It was a day to remember, a day to repeat. The following Sunday, it would happen again and then again. This tiny rural church would bulge at the seams with worshipers from realms seen and unseen, all mixed together in the adoration of the Lamb whose kingdom is without end. That's how a small country congregation became a megachurch overnight, without even trying. They gathered around the word of Jesus, ate his meal, sang his songs, and Jesus showed up every Sunday with all of heaven along for the ride. Do you see it? Every Sunday that we come to church, it's standing room only. Do you not see all of the saints of the church triumphant coming and joining in with us as we worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ? I told you Chad Bird describes it perfectly. And his article is absolutely fantastic. This is the deeper meaning that Jesus is telling the Pharisees and the guests of the ruler of the Pharisees. The wedding feast that Jesus talks about is a symbol of the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. But we can hear the words of Revelation in the background. Blessed are those invited to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Each and every week when we come into these doors, our focus is solely on Christ and him alone. And especially coming out of the pandemic, other things have popped into our heads when we come into, into the church. Thoughts of, are there enough people in the pews? Is the church going to collect enough in the offering plates to help cover the bills? We're just a small country church. We cannot do mission like a large congregation. We can't do uh, outreach and mission. Oh, someone new is in the church and they're sitting in my assigned seat. These thoughts pop into our heads and they control our thoughts. If we let these thoughts control the church, then we're in trouble. The mission of the church is that our focus is to solely be on Christ and him alone. It does not matter how many people are here in church. Our focus is on him and him alone. And when we take our focus off of Christ, then we're going the wrong way. And so in everything that we do in the church, we need to be thinking, how are we glorifying Christ? How are we helping to share his love, his mercy, his grace 
to those who do not know him? How are we shining his light into the darkness of this world? Because in the end, it does not matter how many people are here in church. Our focus, as I said, is solely on Christ alone. Today, we are invited to the foretaste of that marriage supper when we come up for Holy Communion. For when we come up, come up we partake in one heavenly food that people will come from east and west, from north and south, and will eat in the kingdom of God. Christ is the one who is the host, inviting us to come to his table and to partake in his body and blood. There we receive the gift of salvation, the gift of the forgiveness of sins. And at the altar is where we rest in the arms of Christ and partake in his gift. Here we do not have to worry about the stresses of this world. All that matters is that we come to his table. Come and rest, knowing that when our focus is on Christ and his word, he will continue to provide for us, lead us, guide us, and protect us. Amen. confess our faith with the whole church. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Gracious Father, thank you for Jesus and for calling us to be joined to him. Jesus humbled himself for our sake. Guide us to be humble, transformed by his spirit. We can live in faith toward you and in fervent love for others. Thank you. Make us more and more the living image of your son. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Fill your church with obedient, humble faith in Christ alone. Give it pastors, bishops, theologians, and lay leaders who speak your truth in love. By your Holy Spirit, inspire compassionate deeds and holy lives among all who name Jesus Christ as Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Bless the people of this congregation. Help us to remember that we always speak, act, and live in the presence of Christ our King. Let the way we treat everyone reflect his strong, saving love. We pray for the NALC area congregations and today for Holy Trinity Lutheran Church of Grove City and for the Reverend Sandra, Sandra uh, Doberman. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Calm the fears and give comfort and strength to your persecuted servants throughout the world. By your humble witness, cause their enemies to repent and to turn to you. 
they, their only King, Lord and God. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Bless this land with peace, justice, prosperity, concord, and integrity. Guide our leaders in all who take counsel for the nations so that they may always remember that they must give an account of their de deliberations and deeds to you, the King of the nations. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We are too fascinated by power, prestige, and popularity. Give us the grace to notice and cherish the humble and lowly who do your will. More than that, make us like Jesus, who is gentle and lowly of heart. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Those burdened with pain, sorrow, and adversity need the strength and healing that only you can give. We pray on their behalf, especially for those that we name out loud or in our hearts. Quiet their fears, heal their bodies, minds, and hearts, and renew their hope. Bless all who care for them. Give them refreshment and resources to continue their ministry of loving service. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for receiving all who have died trusting in you. Quiet the souls of all who mourn. Teach us to live trustfully as your dear children. Lead us into the house where with all whom you have redeemed, we may rest in your arms, delight in your goodness, and adore you forever. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Let us share God's peace with one another. proclaimed your kingdom and was obedient to your will even to giving his life. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And 
again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Therefore, gracious Father, with this bread and cup, we we'll remember the life our Lord offered for us. And believing the witness of his resurrection, we await his coming in power to share with us the great and promised feast. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Said now we pray your Holy Spirit, the Spirit of our Lord and of his resurrection, that we who receive the Lord's body and blood may live to the praise of your glory and receive our inheritance with all your saints in light. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Join our prayers with those who are your servant of every time and every place and unite them with the ceaseless petition of our great high priest until he comes as victorious Lord of all. pray our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever amen The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. For the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.
serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah.